Okay, Hare Krishna dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, all oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. We'd like to welcome those who have joined for our regular midweek program. Today we will be continuing on with our series on the nine processes of bhakti. Today is part six, which is entitled Vandanam, Praying to the Lord, and our guest speaker will be His Grace Shastakrit Prabhu. So before we get into the class today, we thought that we'll start off with a little kirtan to set the mood and to create the um, auspicious atmosphere. So today the kirtan will be led by His Grace Kartik Kripa Prabhu. So we'll go straight into the kirtan um, now and we will begin the class in a few minutes after the kirtan. So Kartik Kripa Prabhu, if you are ready, you may continue with the kirtan Hare Krishna can you hear me yes Prabhu we can hear you all right Hare Krishna everyone um, before we begin our kirtan uh, I thought it would be fitting to read a small verse that pertains to our current series the nine processes of bhakti but also falls in line with our upcoming festival Nishima Chaturdasi this is from Srimad Bhagavatam chapter 7 Canto 5, verse 23 to 24. Shri Pralad Uvacha, Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam, Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmanivedanam, Iti Pumsa, Pumsarpita Vishnau Bhaktis Chenava Lakshana, Kriyeta Bhagavate Ada Tanmanye Ditam Uttamam. Translation Pralad Maharaj said, Hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form, qualities, paraphernalia and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with 16 types of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord's one's best friend, and surrendering everything unto him, in other words, serving him with the body, mind and words. These nine processes are accepted as the pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the learned person, for he has acquired complete knowledge. Prahlad Maharaj Ki Jai Nishimma Chaturjasi Ki Jai Jaya 
Yashodhanandana Jaya Prajajanaranjana Yashodhanandana Jaya Prajajanaranjana Yamuna Tiravana Jayo Kunjabi Hari Jaya Kunjabi Hari Jamuna Tiravana Jayo Kunjabi Hari Jaya Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunjabi Hari Jaya Jaya Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare
Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Kartik Prabhu, for leading us in such a wonderful kirtan. And um, we will move along now to the next part of the program, which will be the class. Uh, we'd like to just uh, welcome everyone who may have joined a little bit late. Um, thank you all for joining us on our midweek program. Today we'll be covering part six, um, Abandonum, offering prayers to the Lord. And our guest speaker is His Grace Shastakrit Prabhu. Before we begin, I'll just give a brief description, a brief introduction, I should say, to Shastakrit Prabhu. A lot of us know him uh, as he is such an instrumental part of our community here in Atlanta. For those who may not be familiar with him, I'll just uh, give a brief introduction. So Shastakrit Prabhu was born on May 4th, 1979 in South India to a Vaishnava family. He is a beloved disciple of His Holiness Dev Amrita Swami, who he met in New Zealand as a young boy. While still a teenager, he quickly absorbed the philosophy and became one of His Holiness Dev Amrita Swami's first disciples. As a gentle and friendly and personable devotee, he is well known and loved among many devotees around the world. He is very sweet and kind. And he is devoted to giving Krishna consciousness to others, especially by distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. In addition to distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, he is also regularly requested to give morning Bhagavatam lectures, as well as Sunday feast lectures and midweek classes as well. His clear philosophical presentation and entertaining storytelling make his classes both absorbing and memorable. When meeting Shastakrit Prabhu face to face, one will find that he is a warm and wonderful devotee and one will hear only Krishna Kata coming from his lips. He desires to only discuss matters related to Krishna and to bring everyone he meets to Krishna consciousness. Thus, he is a big believer in making Krishna consciousness accessible to newcomers in a casual and informal setting. Therefore, he has started a cafe for prasadam distribution and mantra meditation in Stone Mountain. In Stone Mountain, where he, where, where he resides. So uh, we'd like to welcome Shastakrit Prabhu. Prabhu, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And without any further ado, we will hand it over to you, Prabhu. You may begin. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So I thought I'll read um, from the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 5, text 24. This is the chapter where uh, Prahlad is speaking to His Grace Hiranyakashipu. Prabhupada won't lecture said Sriman Hiranyakashipu. Because without Hiranyakashipu, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the most favorite pastime of Prahlad and Narsingadev, everyone's favorite. Even the new devotees in Krishna consciousness, immediately they fall in with love with Narsingha. They have, they have the tattoos, they have the necklace, they have the pavitra, t-shirt and everything. So in this verse, uh, Prahlad is uh, speaking this most famous word, verse eternally. Uh, we all know this verse. That's that verse, uh, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Pada Sevanam, Archanam Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani Vedanam, Iti Pumsar Pitau Vishnu, Bhaktis Chen Navalakshanaha, Kriyate Bhagavati Ada, Tanmanye Ditam Uttamam. So Prahlad is saying to his father, the translation by Srila Prabhupada. It says, Prahlad Maharaj said, hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, 
form qualities for Fenelia and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with 16 types of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord one's best friend and surrendering everything unto him. In other words, serving him with body, mind and words. These nine processes are accepted as pure devotional service one who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person, for he has acquired complete knowledge. Unbelievable faith and courage uh, Prahlad has is just, you know, talking to an atheistic, most scary person, Hiranyakashipu. Um, but Prabhupada also said, this is the beauty, the simplicity of a child. They don't know anything. It's like when, when people come, customers come to our cafe, you know, we discriminate. Oh, maybe this person is white, he looks, you know, he's black, he's this is that is Hindu. So we sometimes don't give books thinking like they mean they don't want it. But our little daughter, she doesn't know anything. It just takes a, a book and just goes up to them and wouldn't take a no for an answer. And then they take a book and then she runs for another book and another book. She keeps uh, giving them books. So that's the childlike simplicity. So Prahlad doesn't know anything other than nursing a day. And he's telling his father such a profound message, profound instruction. He's the guru. He's become the guru of the father. Because in this world, the people are uh, considered older by the age and knowledgeable by their academic qualification. But in spiritual sense, even if somebody is older, uh, they're, they're childish if they don't know the ultimate goal of life. And even if they could be like so knowledgeable, um, PhD, you know, whatever qualification from like best universities, but still uh, they're limited. The knowledge is limited, you know, to that, you know, worldly subject matter. All they know is like earth, water, fire, air, ether, just like the material knowledge. But spiritual knowledge is something else. A person who is learned, like, for example, Many of our acharyas, they didn't go to school. They were not uh, educated, materially speaking. They couldn't even sign their own uh, name. They don't, they don't know, like, you know, how to read or write. But they were, we worship them on the altar because of their uh, spiritual realization, spiritual wisdom. Like Gaura Kishore Das Babaji uh, had a disciple like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, complete opposite. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was such a, a brilliant intellectual. Gaura Kishore Das Babaji doesn't, uh, was an illiterate. And, you know, but Bhakti Siddhanta begged him to take initiation. And Gaur Kishore Das Babaji, when he had a cataract in his eyes, he told him, what's the use of these fleshly eyeballs? You know, what, what is this? You know, he said, don't take me to hell. He said, like, don't take me to Calcutta to these doctors. He said, I don't want to go to hell. He didn't, he didn't want it to go. He actually told Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He said, <laughs> Don't accept any disciples and don't go to Calcutta, he said. 
you know he he was not into this you know worldly aggrandizement he even told him bhakti siddhanta sar gaur kishor das baba has told bhakti siddhanta sar sri tako why are you distributing books and stuff what will all these people understand they're like asses just uh, go deeper within yourself and do your bhajan like that so material knowledge and spiritual knowledge are two different things so hiranyakashipu had sanda and marka uh you can imagine all the little uh, demon children of the little uh, demons greatest demons they were sent to this elite school run by hiranyakashipu and the teachers were like sanda and amarka they were like the greatest you know modern day scientists they were like that uh but you know but they didn't have any knowledge like prabhupada was saying in one lecture you know people are like asses they don't know anything they they're not they don't know they're they're not the body they don't know there is life after this you know they don't know anything about liberation you know what will they understand like why would they come to our temple you know why would they show any interest they just uh, ignorant of all these thing so regardless of one's material wealth and position and education the person is ignorant if he doesn't know anything about spiritual life so pralad is taking the role of his guru pralad is um uh, teaching him pralad ragunandan ragunandan uh, and mukunda this uh yes yeah, when when mukunda visited uh, lord chaitanya Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Mukunda that are you are you the father of Raghunandan or is Raghunandan your father? Prabhupada was explaining how Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is asking like who is more spiritually advanced, who is teaching who in spiritual life? Because Mukunda went somewhere one day and he, he asked. <laughs> Raghunandan to make an offering and this little child put the whole plate in front of the lord and then rang the bell and said the prayers and nothing happened he started crying and the deity said i already ate i ate through my eyes and raghunandan said i don't i don't understand all this deep philosophy you have to eat just like everybody else so the the deity ate the whole plate and then the boy came out with the empty offering plate and the mother was shocked mother said where is the prasad said krishna ate it so like that chaitanya mahaprabhu was pointing out that the child had so much faith so he is the father so in this famous verse pralad is speaking to hiranyakashipu and propa is um, beautifully giving a little purport to each of this uh, processes so for the sixth one vandanam propasila propasis although prayers are a part of the edi worship they may be considered separately like the other items such as hearing and chanting and therefore separate sentiments are given here with the lord has unlimited transcendental qualities and opulences and one who feels influenced by the lord's qualities in various activities offers prayers to the lord in this way he becomes successful in this connection the following or some of the offenses to be avoided a to offer obeisances on one hand b to offer obeisances with one's body covered c to show one's back to the deity d to offer obeisances on the left side of the deity 
E, to offer obeisances very near to the deity. So Prabhupada is saying that, you know, this uh, um, separate st statements are given here with Prabhupada is saying that the Lord has unlimited transcendental qualities and opulences and one who feels influenced by the Lord's qualities in various activities offers prayers to the Lord. So beautiful. So Akrura. Akrura is a um, personification of this uh, Anga, this uh, Bhakti, Vandanam. What an amazing uh, devotee he was to make it into the pages of Bhagavatam. Akrura, he was, you know, even offering obeisances to come, suggest the fact he is giving uh, opportunity to go to uh, Vrindavan to see Krishna. And the Spiritual Master mentioned that, you know, the best way to pray is to just to repeat the prayers of the previous acharyas, previous devotees. That's the best way and that's the safest. Because in the beginning stages, uh, really even, I mean, if we are not a devotee, we're, people are clueless what to pray. You know, they're always praying and the minds are always changing. The mind is changing and then the, you know, the prayers are changing or they, they ask something to Krishna and then when they get it and then they regret. Because Krishna is compared to a desire tree, Kalpa Vriksha, just like Vaishnavas are compared to a desire tree. And whatever we beg from a desire tree or whatever we request, we'll get it. But sometimes it may not be uh, good for us. Like there is the story of a man. He was walking through a forest and then he came under a desire tree. And he was exhausted. And he didn't know it was a desire tr tree. So he just said, oh, I wish um, there was a little bed for me to rest. And immediately a nice soft bed appeared. And then he was amazed. So he was sitting on the bed and then he was like, I'm like so hungry and it's dark and cold. I, you know, I wish I had something to eat. Immediately this feast appeared in front of him. And then he ate a nice feast and he was like full and nice bed. Then he was desiring, oh man, I wish somebody was there to like massage me. I've been walking all day so tired. So then this uh, nice two, three people, you know, damsels came to massage him. And like that. And then his monkey mind, all of a sudden, uh, got fearful. He said, oh, what if there is uh, a tiger in the forest that will come and eat me? And immediately... A tiger came and uh, devoured him. So, like this, sometimes we don't even know uh, what to what to pray. Sometimes our own prayers get in trouble. So, till the stage that we are purified, um, the safest thing is to uh, repeat the prayers of the predecessor acharyas. Bhagavatam is full of prayers. Chaitanya Charitam Rita is full of prayers. Just a six ashtakam alone. How many lectures have been given just on these um, eight verses? There is this Arvar, uh, one of the 
saints of South India, one of the uh, lady acharyas, she sang like 30 verses, uh, Tirupavi. And again, same thing for, you know, thousands of years, so many lectures and books and commentaries have written just on the 30 verses. Like that, so many books, so many prayers already there. All we have to do is just uh, repeat them till we become purified. And then uh, Krishna will inspire us. Krishna will give us realization uh, how to pray and what to pray like that. I was just meditating on the you know, prayers that uh, Srila Prabhupada wrote on the Jaladuta. What an amazing uh, set of prayers. I remember when I was a new devotee, new, not a devotee, I was just uh, reading self-realization. And when I came across these prayers, I was just like, I don't even know what is this gone or who is Prabhupada or any of this stuff. I was just reading first time this book and it was really like moving i was just like amazed you know such an amazing set of prayers and even srila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur uh, you know he was going through so many difficulties and obstacles and opposing elements so many enemies, even his, uh, some of his disciples, uh, you know, didn't like him. You know, the, the Go, caste Goswamis didn't like him. You name it, you know, the, everybody was against him, except for like very few sincere souls. And he um, kind of felt dejected. And he kind of uh, retired and he just wanted to uh, chant like billion names of Krishna. So he said, let me just go and chant. So he just was chanting and he would just once in a day, he'll just make a little rice. And even if it's pouring rain, he would just hold an umbrella over his head. He would just chant. And if any guests come, he would preach, but he would just chant. So much so, it's like dream, like um, darshan. Everybody came. <laughs> Gaurakishore Das, Babaji, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, you know, the six, I um, mean, the, uh, you know, the, the yeah, actually, like six Goswamis of Vrindavan, Panchatattva, they all came and they're like, we sent you to preach. What are you doing? Why are you, why are you in seclusion chanting Japa? And then, and then they, they said to him, please, please preach. We'll back you up. Just preach. We'll supply you everything. And there was a paper clipping. Back then, there was no really like, you know, there's no Chaitanya Charitamrita, not like BBT uh, will ship you these beautiful brand new books for like $80 or $100, three business days. Back then, there was no Chaitanya Charitamrita. What to speak of printing? There was a paper clipping, a verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita came uh, blown in the wind and come and uh, stuck to the legs of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj about preaching. I mean, his, his prayers, he was praying for help. You know, th like when we chant, it says like Bahu Janma uh, Kariyari, Sravana Kirtana, Tabutana Paya Krishna, Pade Premadana says, we can be chanting for millions of births because we are indifferent. It's not like we are so offensive and we're just mumbling some rounds. 
and we don't give the pride of place for Krishna's names in our life, and automatically, you know, some magic is going to happen, and we're going to become like Sakti Aves Avatar or something like that. No, the, the chanting is, is, has to be done with feeling. I'm guilty as charged. But when the Acharyas chant, like Prabhupada, if you listen to all of his kirtans, thousands of them, there's only three uh, tunes that he sings. And he didn't even have Mirdanga like nowadays in Iskon. We were like so fancy. We have the best kirtan singers and best Mirdangas and fancy clothes and harmoniums and sitar and we are even preaching to like, you know, movie stars like Will Smith and so on and so forth. But Prabhupada didn't have even a Mridanga. He, got, he was playing on a little bongo drum. But look at the prayer that the, the, he shook the whole world. That prayer had so much feelings. Bhakti Siddhanta was chanting, the entire Guru Parampara appeared to him. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he prayed. I mean, his Bhakti Vinod Thakur is one of the manjaris. And he prayed, like, oh, I need help. <laughs> Please send me some help. And then the ray of Vishnu was sent. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was asking for help. I mean, every, every Acharya, they felt helpless. Even Srila Advaita Acharya, uh, uh, Mahavishnu and Sadashiva, I mean, who can be like more powerful than them? You know, he was offering a tulsi leaf and Ganga Jala to Shalagra, and he was praying for help. Advaita Charya felt helpless. And, you know, he was praying for help. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also says, I'm a gardener. How many fruits can I pick by myself? How many can I distribute? You know. So he was asking everybody to assist him in the preaching mission. Like this, if we go even uh, before, you know, Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri. Ishwara Puri was such an amazing devotee that he has the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ayuga Avatar, become his disciple. And Madhavendra Puri was crying in his deathbed when he was leaving this uh, material world. He was. Uh, saying to Krishna, you know, my, I've become old, I've become invalid, now I, without attaining you, I'm leaving my body. And his disciple Ram Chandrapuri corrected him, said, oh, why don't you think about Brahman at the last days? Why are you lamenting? You should, uh, a realized soul shouldn't lament for anything. So Madhavendra Puri was sad, he said, you know, I don't have Krishna and I'm dying next to this uh, rascal. He doesn't have any understanding how to talk to a guru, no realization. Like this, if we look at our Sampradaya, uh, everybody um, was praying, praying helplessly, praying fervently. Even Brahma, he, you know, he didn't know what to do. It was like, you know, he had to, he was climbing down from the uh, lotus flower, from the navel of the Lord. And it was just like dark and waves everywhere, water. He didn't know what the purpose was. And then he heard this word tapa. Like this. Um, prayers are very important part of our uh, sampradaya, any bona fide sampradaya. 
Prabhupada said, even, even the Muslims, even the Christians, they all understand this. They all understand this power of prayer. Even Jesus Christ, he mentions, he said to one of his disciples, you know, if you have like a mustard seed of faith, you can move mountains. He said, either be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. So this faith, this um, feeling helpless to pray, to repeat the, the words of um, previous devotees of our spiritual masters, is actually such a, such a powerful process. But it has to be with feelings. It has to be with uh, seriousness and sincerity. Then uh, we will actually feel feel the reason. This last couple of years has been so crazy that <laughs> most of us just was glad to be alive. And, you know, just that's like a great accomplishment, looks like uh, the way the world is. But that's not, uh, you know, that, that's, that's just average. We have, we have so much uh, service to do on, on behalf of our spiritual master. And Krishna will use us. Vila Prabhupada and our spiritual masters will use us. Provided we show our dependency. We show our dependency when we uh, go about our sadhana. When we go, we, uh, you know, our time, time and days won't come back. It's just the most precious thing. So whatever every day we are doing for Krishna, whether it's offering arati or reading uh, Srila Prabhupada's books or chanting japa or when we are distributing books or any service, if we put our heart into it, uh, we will feel great reciprocation from Krishna. We'll make a lot of advancement. We'll feel purified. We'll feel Krishna's presence because Krishna is not a dull stone. Krishna reciprocates. Krishna reciprocates even in the life of a brand new devotee. And we all know over so many years how much mercy Krishna has given. So if we are uh, indifferent and clinging to uh, material desires. If you're offensive, you're like uh, inattentive, spaced out. These things can actually uh, hurt our relationship because it's a relationship that we have with the Supreme Personality of God. Just like even an ordinary relationship, we all had friends or relatives or even devotees that you know you excuse them or you you know they make a mistake or they do something and then you know they say sorry and okay fine they do it again okay fine they do it again so after a while it kind of becomes doubtful it kind of becomes like you know just <laughs> Like my bhakta leader used to say, do whatever you want, man. Just do whatever you want, you know. Just, you know, just be like sincere, like if you mean it or not, you know. So sim similarly, over and over and over. I mean, in the, in the Christian religion, there's this confession, but Prabhupada hated that. You, you sin and then you go and you confess, you sin again. So we have to be uh, sensitive. We have to be sensitive. Um, like a, one of the first and foremost instructions of our spiritual masters, our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, and like that is minimum uh, 16 rounds. No maximum. Like one devotee came to Prabhupada complaining about the material desires. Prabhupada said, you know, you. I told you to chant 64 rounds. You didn't want to do it. 
So I had to keep cutting it down to 16 rounds. Now, why are you complaining about material desires? I said, you said, I told you minimum 16. I never told you. It's no maximum. So if you're feeling material desires, why don't you increase your japa? So if we chant, that's one of the foremost uh, instructions is to chant minimum 16 rounds and also over and over and over all our teachers they say like don't don't cut down on the screen time it's like a greatest enemy of a practitioner of krishna consciousness back in the day i mean a brahmachari or brahmacharin in maya you have to escape from the ashram to go to a you know movie or go eat some boga or something like that and nowadays you know, just in the palm, we have the you know greatest enemy. This tablet, this phone, is draining, draining our vision. Like even like for health, it's so draining. It's draining our time. It's draining our consciousness. So you know we have to be so careful with uh, limiting the screen time. Just like we don't let our baby play with the phone so i catch myself i'm like that's that's me also i'm like that size in spiritual life so no phone for babies like <laughs> we're babies in spiritual life like this every, every part of the day if we are conscious and um, plan plan for the next day you know how to wake up and how give time uh, to chant, chant nicely with feelings. Like Prabhupada gave a very nice purport for the Hare Krishna mantra. He said, my dear Lord Krishna, uh, Srimati Radharani, you know, for so many, you know, countless lifetimes, anadi karma phale. Therefore, some groups, they think we've never been in the spiritual world because Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur says, since time immemorial, we've been here. But we've been here so long, engaged in Maya service, so Prabhupada is saying to the purport of the Hare Krishna mantra. So he's saying, my dear Lord Krishna, Mother Srimati Radharani, for so many countless lifetimes I've faithfully served Maya, but now finally I've come to you. Please engage me in your devotional service. What an amazing prayer. So we have been given out of the 64 items of devotional service. You know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, we just, you know, engage intensely in five of them. We can attain perfection. Prabhupada has given to us all these five in the morning program. Worshipping Tulsi, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting Hare Krishna Mantra, associating with devotees or staying in a holy place like this. So wherever we are, we can make our uh, place, our ashram, our homes, especially nowadays, mostly ISKCON is uh, congregational based. So we can practice Krishna consciousness at home chant Hare Krishna, make time to chant Hare Krishna, worship Tulsi, offer every day something, cook something nice for Krishna, read at least uh, 20 minutes of Srila Prabhupada's purports, um, be eager to associate with devotees. Like this, if we do like this, then it becomes uh, very clear. Krishna's presence becomes very clear in our lives. Krishna's uh, reciprocation, we feel it on a daily basis. So it's not like some ethereal, it's not some mystery uh, Hare Krishna moment. Like any new devotee can follow these processes and feel Krishna's presence and make light years of advancement. So I will stop here. If uh, any of you want to 
make some comments or corrections or realizations, please. Hare Krishna Prabhu. <laughs> Thank you so much for the wonderful class. And yes, um, just uh, uh, in accordance to what you said, if there's anyone who would like to make a comment or have a realization, have a question, please uh, can you raise your hand and um, we can allow you to um, speak. Is there anyone? Okay, but I don't see anyone raising their hand. I Just from my side, um, you were mentioning about uh, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Taku and how he chanted, you know, a billion names of Vishnu and how um, different personalities actually appeared to him and came to ask him about the preaching mission. Uh, you said the six Goswamis and Panchatattva. Um, can you maybe just touch a little bit on that, Prabhu? I'm, I wasn't too familiar with that, uh, with that pastime. I think you're on mute. Oops, sorry. Thank you. So, no, um, to answer your question, Navin Prabhu, I was reading uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Vaibhava by Bhakti Vikas Maharaj. And there, this um, pastime is mentioned of how, um, you know, Maharaj took this vrata, Bhakti Siddhanta took this vrata to chant billion names and then, you know, the whole parampara came to him. I can actually uh, send you, send you that uh, chapter so you can uh, read all about it. Hare Krishna Kati, bro. It's good to see How you. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. I'm doing well. Thank you. Hare Hare Krishna. Krishna. I had a quick question, bro. Um, mm -hmm. Given that we're covering London, I'm praying to the Lord, and you mentioned you know, prescribed chanting round, uh, number of rounds to chant, and what we do in the day. Uh, given that you know many of us have a lot of uh, busy schedules, we have so much to do, broken up between family life, work, some of us are in school. Mm -hmm. um, just give us some thoughts or some insight into how best to balance you know, things between spiritual life, work life, family life, and how can we, if we're not able to fully practice chanting 16 rounds, keeping our sadhana at a high level, what can we do to so get close to them, given busy schedules and time? Uh -huh. Yes, thank you, Baba. Very nice question um, I was personally uh, thinking the same thing uh, actually I've, I've never been so busy before <laughs> um, even in the Brahmachari ashram maybe I should have been so busy in the Brahmachari ashram that I could have stayed there so what happened is I was thinking you know, the, the Acharyas, they talk about different levels of chanting and the experiences that you get. Prema. Prema Pumarto Mahan. There's so many uh, levels. Sraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, you know, Anatta Nivriti, Nishta, Ruchi, you know, Ashakti, Bhava, Prema, like this. So I was thinking myself to myself, I'm like, w when am I going to get to all that if I'm not even uh, chanting nicely? That the basics is missing. The basics is, oops, sorry, is that, you know, we have to, you know, chant before we can get to the different levels. So even the chanting. Um, is inattentive and is uh, like splayed out 
you know, there's very little um, hope of me, you know, falling in ecstasy and all these things. And I also, to myself, I was thinking how easily we can forget. You see, material nature is so powerful. We have some determination and just within like even less than a week, we forget. And it's all, for me at least, it's all about putting it in my mind. Okay, I have to do this. I have to do this most important activity. If I'm not reading, if I'm not chanting, uh, you know, what's the difference between a materialist and a devotee in Kali Yuga? A devotee means he does his rounds and he reads the books. If I don't, very quickly I become a materialist. So I have to put in my mind the night before, I'm going to have to wake up at this time, before baby wakes up, before I start cooking, you know, before, you know, phone starts ringing and the garbage vans are flying by and people knocking doors and it's hot. And, you know, when am I going to do my... So I had to put in my mind the night before. Then it helps to do my do my round. Again, it's up to the individual. I can't say for each person, but we have to make up our mind the night before. Like I have to, you know, come up with a plan. What time I'm going to chant tomorrow? What time I'm going to read? What time I'm going to go on book distribution? If we just do this simple thing, it helps. And also it's it says that you know, there's no question of spiritual life without rising early in the morning. Which means the night before has to be like uh, disciplined. We can't expect to be like uh, super stars in spiritual life if I go to bed at 2 a.m. You know, these things, they don't, they don't match. You know, if well, it drains our spiritual enthusiasm if if we're talking bad about another devotee, if we're you know busy like you know we enjoy eating junk food <laughs> not offered to Krishna. If we're you know we have so much ruchi for the latest uh, TV serial, so many things, and then these things will reflect when we pick up our japa because krishna is a person and he doesn't give you that taste he's he's not happy i feel it myself many time i pick up the beads and i just totally don't feel anything and i had to like trace back i said what did i do like what the hell did i do like why i feel like i'm eating some dry grass why i'm not feeling anything it went from bad to worse so it's a complete science and it takes, we have to make up our mind. Do I want love of Godhead? Do I want to experience ecstasy and spiritual life? Then we got to cut down on all the things that our guru and Prabhupada and everybody else said, don't do it. If we just go to bed early, which is like a huge accomplishment in this day and age, you will see a spiritual life gets better. Because you go to bed even say like 10 and 6 hours or even 8 hours from 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you get up by 8 hours later, still it's only 6 o'clock. And you can chant at least like 12 rounds. I try to chant at least 12, 13 rounds before I switch on the, the news or media or whatever. I mean, it kind of gives you like self-esteem. You did the right thing. You know, you feel Krishna's reciprocation. More people come to take prasad. More people ask me for Bhagavatam set. Devotees come. Guru sends a message. It's like, it's ecstatic. If I don't, if I give myself into TV serial and wasting time, you also feel only regret because the intelligence beating you up like why you know why it doesn't get better why did you do it why did you do it why did you do it and also you don't feel any reciprocation from krishna so it's all like downward spiral so uh, discipline discipline but the problem is like i said we forget so we have to constantly remind ourselves 
and back to the basics back to the basics we have we have to you know do our rounds nicely and read and these two things will like krishna das kaviraj goswami said you know just like my guru whenever we serve him lunch he eats like a super uh, food like things like amaranth quinoa flax seed and all these things it's like otherwise you feel weak if you don't eat nicely so krishna das kaviraj goswami says sravanam kirtanam is like super food that uh, synergy and if we are not serious about it then who are we to blame if we are serious about it we will put a, a nice slot into our day to do this activity i'm again i'm talking to my stupid self <laughs> mostly here so please forgive me but that's all i have to say about it thank you so thank much you. um i had one more question uh yes bro um so speaking on the topic of prayer sometimes you know many times in different classes different uh individuals have mentioned when praying to krishna we should not be asking for material gain or material anything material mm-hmm. so sometimes it's difficult for even myself but a lot mm-hmm. of people to comprehend such a thing <coughs> because mm-hmm. you know especially let's say you're in a difficult situation financially or mm-hmm. you're in a difficult situation with health or someone else in your family or friend is in a situation then it's only natural to pray to krishna for these things which is considered material so i just was wondering if you could touch on that topic and give some clarification on what's okay what's not okay how we should approach the that type of prayer yeah like you know in the beginning stages it's natural you can you know expect like a, i'm not saying you're a beginner you're born in a devotee family is you're special but i'm just saying in our spiritual development we can expect us to be like sukadev goswami or something you know right like off the back but the beautiful thing is propad was explaining krishna even you know that famous verse akama sarva kama va moksha kama udaridi thivirena bhakti yogena yajetam purusham param propad speaking on this verse says, even if you want something material only ask krishna because krishna will give it to you in such a way that uh, you don't want it anymore swamin kritartho varam na jayach dhru maharaj wanted so many things krishna appeared before him and said like and then he said no 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 actually i changed my mind i don't want any of this thing and they said too late i already you know put in like i want to fulfill your desire but in the process he became purified he said you can give me diamonds but i was searching after broken pieces of glass which's going to cut me and bleed you know so even if it's material desires you know we have to be we are where we are so nothing wrong with asking krishna but the demigods will fulfill our desire they will give whatever we want but krishna will only give what we need for our spiritual advancement so we have uh, you know like it's like a teamwork krishna is uh, looking after our welfare our spiritual master is like looking after our welfare and my experience is actually it goes away when i was first new to america i loved electronics so every day when we come back from book distribution there was a best buy near our temple in la so i will get off i last the devotees to drop me off there i'll just go i'll buy a walkman and then i will keep the receipt i'll return it i'll buy something else i'll all these gadgets i was just like amazed like a massive ocean of you know gadgets and you can buy and return and you can make payments and all these things and after a while it just went away krishna just i uh, just kept distributing books and just krishna just took away the thing it's just like after a while i go in i was getting headaches and it's just like realized like bunch of you know electronic energy and lights and it's like you know the i i started to realize this gora arati going on 
and the brahmachari friends are like shaved up showered fresh cloth dancing in ecstasy here i am in best buy so i just you know after a few months of doing that i just just went away so the process is really powerful so you know even if you have material desires which is not surprising which is natural but the process krishna just scrubs it away or he'll give it to you that in a way that you know you don't want it anymore you like you know you regret <laughs> thank you thank so much you. So cool. that was yes. a, uh, really answer my question for you thank you thank you so much babu for the wonderful answer and for the wonderful question as well babu um i see we gone over time but we have one more question uh, if you have time um yes. can we get that question babu Uh, his way santosh chaitanya prabhu has his hand up prabhu if you ready you can go ahead oh, and oh nice you. santosh chaitanya prabhu my yes. good friend long time no see hari krishna prabhu hari krishna how can i serve you nice to hear from you hari krishna prabhu please accept my humble obeisances humble obeisances to you thank you very much for uh, your uh, realizations and your lecture prabhu i have a question i have actually a follow up question on on kartik uh, prabhu's question so uh, you 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 very straight forward you said that you no know, there there's no spiritual life if you are not taking it early in the morning and we we know that uh, rupa used to be the lenient in the beginning when the devotees would join mm mm-hmm. and then uh, he would uh eventually he would uh, be strict on his disciples and even today in iskon when devotees join when there are new bhaktas uh, the other devotees try to help them try to encourage them and we lenient on them and mm-hmm. they they say oh prabhu just chant your 16 rounds whatever you can do just put your effort and then you just keep doing it mm-hmm. and then uh, if, uh, it it just goes on on and on it it never like Uh, the devotees just keep because they they don't want to uh, <clears throat> uh, they don't want the devotees to run off from the scorn and you know so they just keep uh, they don't really push much uh, on the devotee mm-hmm. so what do you suggest when is the right time to push a devotee that now is the time you should push yourself you should wake up early in the morning chant your 16 rounds right before 7 or so what do you think about that when prophet would do that I mean you know we have back in the day there was no experience you know we have you know since like 50 60 years and so much we have learned since propat first started teaching the devotee my experience is you know if whatever we tell the new person that's what they're going to become uh if we are too strict with them and you know heavy with them and like that that's also not nice or if we very attached like oh this person will become uh you know my part of my congregation or my god brother so let me not scare him away and let me be loose with him then they're learning the bad habits from the day one you imagine like any devotee one year into iskon you try you, they already like becoming molded you can't change them you know the the beginning days uh, i accept ex- especially our example and the new devotees see what we do they going to be like that if a strong devotee makes a uh, strong devotees if a devotee is loose or spaced out or offensive or not strict and then the 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 people that he preaches to they just become just like him because i you know i know when i was coming along you know the the devotees very loving very caring but when it comes to spiritual life my bhakta leader used to say prabhu i love you and everything but i can't change the books the philosophy remains <laughs> the same 
So even when you're going in the car or something like that, I, you know, everybody's chanting Japa. And then I try to talk and then they'll tell like, no problem. Everybody's chanting. You can't control your tongue, you know. So a new devotee is just like a child. It's like my daughter. I can't let her do whatever she wants. And then when she's like eight or 10 years old, I think I will discipline her. No, it starts now because <laughs> they're so like a wet cement. But we have to do it genuinely like that we care. We, ha we have to show them that we care. We, you know, we are the well-wishers and we love them. And then, you know, they will take it seriously. But again, it's, it's an art. Like my guru says, speaking of our prayers, my guru says, before he counsels or addresses a devotee, he goes in front of the deity and prays. Please give me the intelligence what to say to this person and how to help them. So it's a fine, it's a fine, uh, it's a balance. It's a balance that way, you know, they, they get, because, you know, they come from the material world and, you know, people are into so much craziness and maya, but unless, you know, we are strong, in the presenting the philosophy, then they will just uh, be like Hindus. You know, I believe in Krishna. I'll come on a Sunday, I'll give a little dan, but there's no sadhana. There's no bhakti shastri. There's no initiation. There's no giving in charity. There's no preaching. They just remain in there. Have you seen like some devotees come to our temple like 30, 40 years just on Sunday and that's it? Because <laughs> they never had that fortune of training. Anyway, I hope I answered your question, Santosh from. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna, bro. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you for the wonderful uh, answer and thank you to Santosh Chaitanya for the nice question. It was really nice to see Santosh Chaitanya Prabhu after such a long time as well. And yes, Prabhu, um, Shastakrit Prabhu, thank you so much for the wonderful class. You have such a unique way of um, narrating and explaining uh, these um, esoteric subject matters. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Prabhu. We look forward to having your association again. Thank you for the sweet nectarine class that you have given today. And um, yes, Prabhu, thank you so much. So uh, we we'll move along now to the next part of the program. And um, we'll just uh, wrap up the program actually with a few announcements and then we'll take leave. So I'm just drawing up the screen. So uh, as you know, uh, we have a few um, upcoming festivals and a few upcoming uh, programs as well. Um, the main program for this month um, is Nishringa Chatu Dasi, the auspicious appearance of Lord Nishringa Dev, which is uh, on May 25th and we have our guest speaker, His Grace Amarendra Prabhu. Um, more details will be sent out uh, regarding uh, this festival. Uh, we will be sending timings and um, the activities that will be taken place during the festival. Uh, we have confirmed that there will be a Nishringa Yagya as well as a um, Abhishek with RT and Prashad and Kirtan. And we are also giving the opportunity to the devotees to um, present their names and uh, the names will be offered to the Yagya on Nishringadev uh, Chatu Dasi. So if anyone is interested in submitting their names or submitting names of anyone they know, please uh, feel free to forward those details to the two numbers that you see on screen. The first one is 470-808-8071 or 470-809-3397. So you can submit the names for the Yagya to these numbers and you'll receive a confirmation um regarding the uh the names that have been submitted so we encourage everyone to please participate uh in this uh, very special opportunity yes and uh so next week we will actually not be having our midweek program because nishringa chatudasi falls on that day so we will be continuing in the upcoming uh two weeks uh with the series the nine process of bhakti and the next uh, part will be part seven, which is Dasyam, serving the Lord. And we have um, His Grace Shambi Hari Prabhu, who will be speaking 
um, on that particular class. And then also uh, on Sunday, we'll be continuing our series on Lord Nishwingadev, the protector of the devotees, which will be part four, the appearance of Lord Nishwingadev. And we have a very, very special guest speaker, um, His Holiness Bhakti Chaitanya Swami. Um, so Maraj hasn't uh, previously spoken on this forum. Um, so we are very excited to have him and we encourage everyone to please join us for that as Maraj is uh, very senior a disciple of uh, Srila Prabhupada and um, is a really sweet um, narrator uh, in uh, Krishna Kata. So we uh, encourage everyone to please join us for that on Sunday. And we have some upcoming festivals we'd like to mention as well. On May 20th, um, the appearance day of uh, Srimati Sita Devi. On May 22nd, we have Mohini Ikadasi. And then on May 23rd, we have uh, the breakfast, which will be between 6.31 and 11.13 a.m. So you can please make a note of that. And also, uh, we just like to encourage everyone to please check out our social media platforms. We have a link tree where uh, all our social media links are posted on. So we have WhatsApp groups, Facebook, Instagram. You can communicate with us and uh, get updates via all these platforms. And we also have a really wonderful YouTube page where all our classes are uploaded, are recorded and uploaded for the series uh, that we have uh, currently going and for the past series that we have concluded as well. So please check that out. And uh, we would just like to send prayers uh, to uh, certain devotees who are still uh, in the midst of the uh, Corona pandemic. His Holiness Bhakti Bringang Govinda Swami, His Holiness Bhakti Mag Maharaj, His Holiness Bhakti Raghav Maharaj, Her Grace Govinda and Leela Mataji. And we'd also like to send prayers to Iskon Kolkata who recently faced a severe fire at their temple. And to all the doctors who are on the front lines fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. And also we'd like to send prayers to all of those that we uh, did not get a chance to mention. So um, I'd like to please encourage everyone to chant Hare Krishna three times in a prayerful mood, sending prayers for these devotees. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Shila Prabhupada. So yes, thank you so much dear devotees uh, for joining us uh, once again for our midweek program. We do appreciate everyone's participation and association. And we'd like to encourage everyone to please continue joining us on this forum um, as we go along and uh, discover the nine processes of bhakti as well as the uh, Nashringadev Leela. So please continue to join us and we'll definitely uh, keep you updated with everything that is happening uh, regarding uh, ISKCON Atlanta. Thank you so much, dear devotees, for everything. We shall now take your leave. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.